Hello crafty friends and welcome to this clean and simple card making video. Today I'm going to share with you another idea for using your alphabet dies. I think we're up to idea number 12 now so do check out the previous videos which I will link in the video description if you want to know techniques numbers 1 to 11. But this is the card I made yesterday using my alphabet dies and I'm going to show you today how I did that. First things first, I've taken a whole alphabet of dies, all the same style. There's no reason why you can't mix and match styles, so feel free to do that if you want. And I've stuck them cutting side up on this piece of sticky note. Well, there's four sticky notes there. I've just stuck them together and that just keeps them still, stops them wandering off. And I've got some regular old smooth white cardstock here. It's not even particularly clean, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to place that over there and run it through my die cutting machine. So there we have all our letters cut out and I can keep this if I want to use it as some kind of random stencil like I did in the last video. So what I want to end up with eventually is a textured tag and this is the tag die that I'm going to use just taking another piece of smooth white cardstock drawing roughly around it and then I'm going to stick all of these onto here. And now I'm spreading on some PVA glue. This is high tack glue. You could use matte gel medium, Mod Podge probably. And now I'm going to stick my letters on in a random but grid-like formation, overlapping the lines slightly. So when I cut my tag out, I'm going to have partial letters coming in from the side. I might need to cut some more letters if I can't quite fill the whole tag. I can also use the little bits that come from the inside of the letters, like that bit from the D that's just flown off across my craft room. If the glue dries too quickly, you can always add a bit more. So here's a little gap and I'm going to take that bit from the D, the middle of the D, and pop it in there. And then this J can snuggle in nicely there. So as I say, I'm just building up a, a grid-like arrangement of letters. It's probably a good idea to think about what words you might accidentally be making with your letters. So uh, don't uh, arrange them in any offensive fashion. Of course, you don't have to use a random arrangement or selection of letters. You could cut out the letters for a particular word and do them over and over again so that the texture that you create creates words. I think I might need a couple more letters. So those are all stuck down and now I'm going to get a bit of non-stick deli paper. You could use greaseproof paper or the release paper from a sheet of sticky. Now I'm going to take some smooth clear gesso to prime my letters or my textured paper. This will just unify the texture because some of these bits will have glue on them and some of them will be just paper. And when I do the next stage, the coloring stage, I want the color to adhere to everything the same, if you see what I mean. So I'll just brush it over one way, brush it over the other way to get in all the nooks and crannies. You can swirl it as well to get in the nooks and crannies. Any brush marks will show probably in your final piece. So just think about the kind of brush marks you want to show. I'm going to wash my paintbrush out to get that gesso out of it because if it dries on the brush, it will make the brush solid and probably never come out again. You can leave that to dry naturally, but for the sake of speed, I'm going to use my hairdryer to dry it. So that's dry enough for the next stage, which is to add ink. And I don't want any wet bits of glue or gesso because that will get on my ink pad when I swipe it across but I think that is fine. Don't worry if yours has gone a bit wobbly or wrinkly. When you run it through your die cutting machine and stick it to a card it'll be fine. So I want to add some pink. I've got Victorian velvet. I'm just going to swipe that over and then bring in my brush and blend it on getting into all those nooks and crannies. And as you can see, more or less, because I use that gesso, 
the letters and the background are taking the ink. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with vintage photo, but I'm not going to put quite so much on. I might want to build up a bit. I don't want to cover up all the pink. I want some of that peeking through. And now I'm going to go back in with my pink and scrape across a bit. I might get a bit of vintage photo on there, but I can wipe it off with a paper towel on my finger. Same again. I'm going to go from the other direction this time and just scrape a little bit. I'm not going to blend it. I'm just adding a bit of texture, really. And because I've sealed the paper with gesso, the ink is just going to sit on top of the gesso it's not going to get sucked into the paper so I want to help that ink to dry a bit and I'm going to use my hair dryer to do that. I've got a bit of paper towel here I'm going to press that on and that will lift up again any sort of blobs of ink. Go. You can always kind of brush over it as well and now I'm going to add a bit of a deeper darker colour I've got this Lindy Stamp Gang moon shadow mist in i think it is pirate's gold or something like that where's the thing gossamer gold i've had this for absolutely donkey's years and there's about this much left in it now and sometimes it spritzes and sometimes it doesn't so we'll just have to wait and see oh it is so i'm going to squirt that all over not too much but then encourage it to run about and wiggle between the letters let it drip let it run so this is going to stain it brown but when it dries it's going to have this beautiful shimmery gold to it and because of the texture from the letters it's going to pull around the letters and kind of bring them out a bit again you can leave it to dry or you can dry it with a hairdryer now again i'm just going to come back in with a bit of victorian velvet add that on top Smush it down a bit with my finger to get rid of the streaky bits. This brings a bit of lightness back to some of the letters. You can just keep going as much as you like really with this, layering different things on top. And now for a final touch. I've got some Lustre Wax from Sizzix in, I think it's rose gold. Yes, rose gold. And I'll put a fair blob on my finger just brush it off there and then go over this and add another layer of luster and that will bring out the letters even more. So we are now ready to die cut our tag and pop it there so we get that cut off effect that I was talking about. And this is a technique that you could batch. You could, instead of making enough for one tag, you could make a whole sheet of A4 or whatever everybody else uses in the world and then cut lots of tags out of it. So there's our tag. I just want to give it a little bit of definition around the edge. So I'm going to take my darkest brown Distress Oxide Walnut Stain and daub it with a sponge just around the edge. And if you want, you could go in and add a few darker spots in a few places. This will uh, cover any luster, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's nice to have a bit of variation across something like this. So I'm ready to stick my tag down. This card that I made yesterday is about five by seven and a quarter inches, and it's a little bit big, I think. So I've made this one, which is five by six and a half, and I've added a panel of smooth white cardstock that I cut with a stitched rectangle die. And I'm gonna glue this on to the left-hand side again, but I'm gonna get it central, I think. Roughly central, I mean, it doesn't have to be. When I say central, I mean in the middle in this direction. I do want to get it straight, but I think that will do. Then I'm going to get a clean sheet of deli paper and press that down and set it aside to dry. So for this card, I added a leafy branch thing using this die. And I just cut it from smooth white cardstock, then gilded it a bit with the luster wax. 
my daughter suggested that I add a little bit of green just for some contrast so I'm going to do that I always listen to her advice because she's very very artistic and very good at what she does so I'm just smushing on a bit of bundle sage I don't want too much just enough to show up and to cut from so I dry that with my hairdryer so I do want a little bit of white on there still so I think I might cut from this area here which is a bit more splotchy and blotchy so there we have our slightly blotchy slightly green leafy branchy thing flourish and I'm just adding a little bit extra here and there with my finger dauber I still think it needs a bit of gilding so I am gonna get the rose gold out again To add it, I'm going to use some more of my high tech PVA and my dedicated glue dauber. It's more glue than dauber now because I haven't washed it out, but that's okay, it still works. And lay that on there to the left again. Get the clean side of my deli paper and press that down. So on this size card, the branch has kind of gone from the top to the very bottom almost which I rather like. As somewhere to put my sentiment, I have got this white banner dye, which I think sits really nicely there and brings the white from the background to the foreground and breaks up some of this big brown tag. I've cut two because I want two extra layers to stick under this end because it's going over two layers of card once it hits the tag and I want it to stay level. So now that's stuck down, there's about the same size gap here as there is here. So it's nice and central. I can get ready to make my sentiment. You can obviously put any sentiment you like on, but I'm gonna use the same letters that I used for the background here. And I'm gonna do the word hello, because it fits nicely on that banner. And I'm gonna take this bit left over and I think some walnut stain, just to make it a bit darker and help it pop. Maybe a few spots of bundle sage. I don't know if that'll show up when I finally die cut, but it'll do. So I've put a teeny tiny little dot there where the center of the card is, and I've arranged my letters how I want them spaced. And the whole word is six centimeters wide. The middle is three which is just about middle of the L. If I pop that there, so the middle of the L is about middle there. Then I can just add my letters. There are lots of ways of lining up your letters and transferring them. You could use a bit of washi tape, you could use saran, is it saran? No, not saran wrap. Press and seal, that's it. Masking tape, anything you like. I just want them to look central on that banner. And I'm going to press those down with a clean bit of deli paper. And apart from getting my sand eraser out later and scrubbing off these mucky fingerprints, I think we're done. So that was the prototype. I really like the tag and everything on here, but I do think the card is too big. And I think this one is the perfect size and it really does benefit from having this stitched rectangle panel on top. But do let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I think overall I prefer this tag because it's got a bit more variation, a bit more of the pink showing through. But I prefer this design or this, this size card with the, with the rectangle, that's the word I'm looking for. But let me know which one you like best. Right, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here very soon. Bye for now.